misinformation and disinformation campaigns continue to cause confusion uh, that DPH and other states are forced to clarify. It takes away va valuable focus and particularly has a negative impact on those who can be swayed easily. Vaccine information leading to vaccination avoidance can contribute to hospitalizations and deaths called, caused by the virus and is considered a significant public health threat. It's so concerning that the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy, issued an advisory last summer warning the American public of the threat. He said health misinformation, including disinformation, has threatened the U.S. response to COVID-19 and continues to prevent Americans from getting vaccinated, prolonging the pandemic, and putting lives at risk. As of late May, 67% of unvaccinated adults had heard at least one COVID-19 vaccine myth and either believed it to be true or were not sure of its veracity, according to a survey analysis and research that was conducted by the Kaiser Family Foundation. So what is misinformation? It is information that's false, inaccurate, or misleading, according to the best available evidence at the time. Disinformation is actually more sinister and it is spread intentionally to serve a malicious purpose, such as to trick people into believing something for financial gain or political advantage. Now, most people don't fall under the category of spreading disinformation, but they may spread misinformation because they don't know that the information is false. They haven't checked it through credible sources such as CDC, the National Institutes of Health, the Journal of the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, or other credible uh, medical, public health, or governmental resources. So there's different types of misinformation, and it usually falls in uh, one or more of seven categories. Uh, memes are in general fun, colorful images or graphics that were usually created as a joke, but then people reshare thinking that they are true. And an example that happens to be popular right now is one with a bird claiming that birds are actually drones and not real. Um, websites that often look professional, uh, designed to look like news sites, uh, but have stories that are false or misleading, is not uncommon, unfortunately, and they usually have sensational headlines designed to make us click on them. Um, another area of misinformation is quotations, where the beginning or end or part of the quotation may have been deleted or changed, uh, which also changes the meaning. So uh, maybe the person did say what was quoted, but without the full context, it's not a fair representation of what they said. Um, old images that are recirculated as if they're actually very recent is something that we have, have seen during this pandemic. Also misleading graphs or diagrams that look official, but don't tell the whole story is something we see. Um, similarly, adding an official looking logo like the CDC's to the claim is seen. Cherry picked statistics. And as an epidemiologist, this one drives me nuts. Uh, too often we see people choosing the number that supports uh, what they want to argue, but without all the data, they haven't provided all the context. Uh, there's a recent paper that just went viral last week that meets a lot of these points. Uh, the paper suggested that lockdowns didn't work, but the authors who are not credible scientists, they cherry picked the studies that they used it was not peer reviewed by scientists. And then they added a logo from Johns Hopkins University on the paper, which uh, I really led to it being shared by multiple media venues. So these are the types of things that we need to, to keep um, our eyes open for, including uh, videos that have been edited to change the um, original meaning. So the Surgeon General's Office has created a misinformation checklist. This is what you can do when you see information to uh, help you um, assess whether or not it's credible. 
first of all, did you check with CDC sources or um, the health department, us or other health departments to see if there's any information on the claims? A couple really good uh, sources, um, FEMA, as well as um, an entity called Public Health Communications Collaborative. Um, both have misinformation alert pages where you can um, often find out more information about these uh, circulating claims. Um, you can ask a trusted healthcare professional like a doctor or a nurse. Um, also, did you check online to see if it has been verified by a trusted source? Again, you're looking for trusted and known government sites or professional medical associations. Uh, did you review the About Us page on the website to see if you can trust the sources? And lastly, very important, if you are not sure, don't share and contribute to the spread of misinformation. So I wanna take a deeper dive into some uh, more recent examples of misinformation. Uh, one is the type of face mask that one should wear, which has received um, a lot of attention and has become very controversial lately. I'm uh, really uh, creating some confusion and, and uh, we've seen a bit of misinformation. Um, I've seen from multiple people that uh, they say the CDC says that cloth masks are useless. Um, but the evidence from numerous peer-reviewed studies show that cloth masks can certainly help to prevent the spread of COVID. So again, the myth is the fact that uh, CDC has said cloth masks are no good anymore, which is not what they've said. People have gone too far in interpreting CDC's guidance on face masks. Um, they did not say that you can't wear, you shouldn't wear cloth face masks. However, they did say that respirators and KN95s, especially those which provide a better seal around the mouth and nose may be better. But the bottom line is that any mask is better than no mask at all. And the most important thing again, is that your mask, um, whatever it is made of is multi-layered and fits well around the mouth and the nose. Now, now we've added several sources to the bottom of this slide, including one from the CDC, which really does a nice job summarizing the trials that support the effectiveness of mask use. Uh, on that page, um, it says multi-layer cloth masks can block 50 to 70% of fine droplets and particles. Uh, let's turn to another area where we've seen a lot of misinformation. Um, and this is the debate on whether infection acquired immunities, what some people call natural immunity, is better than vaccine acquired immunity. Uh, the fact is vaccine immunity provides more reliable and stable immunity than infection acquired immunity. And additionally, emerging evidence shows that getting a COVID-19 vaccine after you recover from COVID-19 infection provides added protection. Uh, but the myth or the misinformation that's been promoted um, is that the CDC admitted that a recent study shows that immunity from COVID-19 infection is better than immunity from vaccination. And the fallacy is that um, they've misinterpreted or taken a piece of data to promote their point of view. What the study indicated during the Delta variant period was that while natural immunity offered good protection, uh, the best protection was found among people who were vaccinated after a previous infection. Now this study was conducted during the Delta wave and while the Delta wave is still present, or Delta, I should say, is still present in the US and around the world, uh, the Omicron variant is now dominant. And last week, we discussed a number of studies that look at the efficacy of vaccines and especially boosters in preventing infection, hospitalizations, and deaths uh, now um, while Omicron is more prevalent. So I really wanna emphasize that there's no safe way to acquire natural immunity. And while a COVID-19 infection can provide some protection, vaccine acquired immunity is just much more reliable and a lot less risky. And this is become because the protection someone gains from having an infection, it varies depending on the disease, uh, from person to person. We don't know how long natural immunity might last. And the level of protection people get 
from getting COVID-19 also may vary depending on how mild or severe their illness was, the time of since their infection, and any underlying health conditions in their age. The COVID-19 vaccine helps protect you by creating an antibody response without you having to experience sickness. Getting sick with COVID-19, as we have seen, can cause severe illness or death, and we can't reliably predict who will have mild or severe illness. And you can continue to have long-term health issues after COVID-19 infection. So lastly, one study that I want to point out showed that for people who already had COVID-19, those who did not get vaccinated after their recovery are more than two times as likely to get COVID-19 again than those who got fully vaccinated after their recovery. So I really want to encourage you to check your sources and make sure that any studies that you're sharing or citing to others are peer reviewed studies, which you can identify in the study citations. And while we work at DPH every day to combat misinformation, we are working to roll out a web page that highlights common misinformation alerts and provides the facts for the situation. We hope this page will be live within the next few weeks on de.gov slash coronavirus.